Hey guys, so in this lesson, we're gonna be talking about an Alf Bau diagram. Now maybe your teacher doesn't call it that, but what it is, is it's the blocks that your teachers maybe showed you, where it looks something like this, and then you've got these arrows that go in the blocks, right? That is what I talk, that is what I mean when I say um, an Alf Bau diagram. Okay, and to be able to do an Alf Bau diagram, you need to understand electron configuration. So let me show you how it works. So we're gonna start by looking at aluminum and we are gonna look at its electron configuration, which is something we have looked at in the past. Okay, so here's aluminum. So let's get the con electron configuration. So we enter at row one and we know that that's the S block and we're gonna block off two blocks over there. Then we go down to row two into the S block and we're gonna block off two things over there. And then we enter the, the P block where that's gonna be um, six electrons, so two P6. And then we're gonna go into row three where we enter the S block and that's S2. And then we enter the, the P block again and that'll be one. Okay, so it's important that you know how to do that before trying to do an alpha bar diagram. Now, the alpha bar diagram is um, really, really easy. So you're gonna start with a 1s, so you're gonna just put it like that. Then the next one is a 2s, so you put it above. Then the next one is a p. Whenever it's a p, just make three blocks next to each other. Then it's a 3s again, and then there's a p, so make three blocks. Okay, so then you can just say here 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p. Now your teacher might also want you to put an arrow going up like this that says energy or something like that. Some teachers are strict about that, some teachers aren't. Just follow what your teacher's doing, okay? Now what we're gonna go do is we are gonna go and put electrons into these blocks starting at the bottom until we get all the way up to here. So you are gonna put only two electrons per block. The one must face up and the one must face down. Now, each of these little blocks are called orbitals, okay? Each little block is called an orbital, okay? And there was a scientist who discovered that each orbital can only hold two electrons, and this is called Pauli's exclusion principle. And what it tells us is that an orbital can hold a maximum of two electrons. Okay, so you'll never find a block with three or four. You can find a block with one, but it'll never be more than two. Okay, the next thing I said was that one must face up and one must face down. What that is due to is because of, well, that's also Pauli's exclusion principle, but it says, which says that an orbital can hold a maximum of two electrons and then add here with opposite spin. So the one electron spins this way and the one electron spins that way. So we show that by showing um, the arrows like that. Okay, one must go up and one must go down. Now, let's just go full blocks of two um, until we get uh, until we get to this area here. And then I need to explain something quite interesting. So you do that. Okay, so you see how we did the three S2? Now, in the 3P, there is only one electron. You see there was only one block in the 3P, so you're just gonna put one. And you're always gonna fill it from the left-hand side first. Okay, there we go. And so that is what the alpha bar diagram looks like. But now there is some extra little um, twists that are gonna come up in the next examples. So do another example with me so you can just see, especially if there was another electron over here, you would be wrong if you wanted to put it in the same block like that. There is a special rule, and I wanna show you that now. So here we go, let's do the electron configuration and the alpha bar diagram of oxygen. So oxygen is over here. So for its electron configuration, you're gonna enter at row one, the S block, and there's two blocks that you're gonna sc scratch off there. Then you're gonna enter into row two, where you start off in the S block, and there's two electrons, or two parts over there. Then we enter into the 2p orbitals, or yeah, the, ro the, the part 2p, and there's one, two, three, four. And so that is the electron configuration of oxygen. Now for the alf bar diagram, you're gonna put the 1s, 2s, and then whenever there's a p, you put three. And so you can say here 1s, 2s, 2p. Your teacher might then want you to say energy, and then an arrow going up here. Some teachers don't want that, some teachers do. 
Okay, so we can definitely go full in two electrons over here, two electrons over here. Now, when you get to P, it is very important that we have four electrons. So this would be wrong to do this, to put like that, to make four electrons. That's not correct. What we are supposed to rather do is to fill up one electron at a time, or one, one, yeah, you do one electron at a time, like this. You put one there, then you put one there, then you put one there. So how many electrons have we done? Three, but we are supposed to do four. So only once you've done that, then you go put the fourth one like that, okay? That rule is called Hund's rule, with a U, Hund's rule. And that tells us that you can pretty much just summarize it as first put one electron in each orbital before pairing electrons. So remember, these are all orbitals. Each block is an orbital. So you first put one electron in each orbital, and if there's leftovers, then you go pair them up. But you don't pair them up first, okay? So don't pair them up first, just put one in each block. Um, I'm talking about in this row. Of course, when you're in row two, um, you're gonna do it like that. But when you get to row P, um, you first fill up one in each block. Okay, let's do another example. So here we have sulfur. So let's go do its um, alpha bow diagram, or let's do its electron configuration first. So here's sulfur over here. So we're gonna go um, into row one first. Row one, you're gonna enter the S block, and we're gonna block off two electrons. By now, this should be pretty easy for you. Then we're going into row two, where we first do the S block. So that's two electrons over there. Then we're going into uh, the, the P block of row two, where we're gonna do one, two, three, four, five, six electrons over there. Now we are gonna go into, um, okay, wait, so what have we done? Wait, this is where we're trying to get to, and we've done all of that. Yes, now we're going into row three, where we're gonna enter the S block, and that's gonna be one and two. Then we're gonna enter the P block, where we're gonna go one, two, three, and four. Four. So that's its electron configuration. Now for the alpha bar diagram, you're gonna put um, the 1s, 2s, p always gets three, so that's 2p, 3s, and then p always gets three, like that. Okay, and now you're just gonna go fill up. So there, 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 there. It's only, um, you see here when I get to p, I don't need to, um, I don't need to worry about putting one, 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 because I know that all of these are gonna be filled up because the P is completely full. It's only when I get here to this last one, that's where things get a bit weird, okay? Okay, now we've got four electrons. So the wrong way to do this would be to put all four of them inside here. You rather put one, 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 and then you put the fourth one, if there's a fourth one. Okay, let's make that a bit bigger, like that. Okay, that's important. They're gonna try catch you out on that one. Let's do another example. So here we have carbon. So we're first gonna do the electron um, configuration. So you enter row one, that's the S block, and you do one, two over there. Then you enter into row two, where you enter the S block, and you do one and two. Then you enter into the P block, where you do um, one, and two, there we go. Now if we do the alpha bow diagram, you put your 1s, 2s, 2p. So for p, you always put three blocks. Okay, so now we're just gonna go full up twos. So one going up, one going down. Now for the p, we only have two electrons. So you're not gonna go put them into this block. You're gonna put one at a time, starting from the left. So one and one. And that's your two electrons that you've used, and so you can stop there. If you count all of these arrows, you would see that there are six, and that's because there are six electrons in carbon. Our last example, calcium. So we first do the electron configuration, so calcium is all the way down here. So we start in row one with the S block, and we do one, two. Then we go to row two, where we start with the S block, and that's one and two. Then we go to the P block, so that's two P, and we do one, two, three, four, five, six. 
Then we go to the three block and we'd go enter into the S orbitals and that's going to be S2. Then we enter into 3P, so it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Okay, and then we enter into row 4, the S block, and there's 1, and then 2, and then we are there. Okay, now we are going to do the Aufbau diagram of that. So you're going to put your block for 1S, 2S. Um, 2P, you're going to put three of them, 3S, 3P, you're going to put three of them, whenever it's a P, you put three, and then 4S, you put one. Okay, and now you just go full up, don't worry about any problems until we get to the very top, that's the only place where problems can happen. Okay, so you can just fill up, see I'm not worried about filling one, 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 because I know that all of those are going to be filled, you can if you want to, you can do that if you wanted to. That part's only important when your top row has three. Okay, now uh, there are two electrons here, so we have no problems. We can just put them both there. And that is the alpha diagram. And then your teacher might want you to say energy over here with an arrow going up. Okay, and that's it.